Superman is here because today he's going to help me celebrate reviewing and ranking my 200th Atari 2600 game. And that game is none other than Superman. And I really dig this old style Superman art. You got two moons in the background, one small, one large, and two Supermans, one small and one large. How awesome must be a parallel universe. Let's go ahead and take Superman. Let's pop it in my Atari 7800 Pro system and see how it holds up today. Let's go to the game. Superman was published by Atari and carries the copyright year of 1979. It was programmed by John Dunn, who used the prototype code from Adventure to make the game. Ironically, even though Superman uses code from Adventure, it ended up being released before Adventure. The manual opens with the following. You are Superman, trademark 1979 DC Comics. Receiving a tip on a bomb scare, you rush to the Metropolis waterfront. Dropping into a nearby phone booth, you change into Clark Kent, mild-mannered reporter for the Daily Planet, and continue east toward the Metropolis Memorial Bridge. As you approach the bridge, it explodes. Lex Luthor, arch enemy of Superman, is seen leaving in a helipack. Some of the Lex Luthor henchmen rush from the scene. A helicopter flies by carrying Lois Lane. Is she in trouble? Or has she hired the helicopter to scoop the story? Another crook sneaks away. This is a job for Superman. You rush back to the phone booth and emerge as the Man of Steel. Up, up, and away. You fly to capture Lex Luthor and his gang. But beware, Lex Luthor has released three kryptonite satellites that will seek you out. If any touch you, you become weak. You will lose your ability to fly and to capture or hold on to things. Only by touching Lois Lane can you be revived. Superman is a very early multi-screen action adventure game for one or two players. That's right, did you know Superman has a two-player mode? In it, both players control Superman at the same time, with the left controller having priority using right and left, and the right controller having priority using up and down. Honestly, I've never tried it, but it sounds more clumsy than fun. The difficulty switches are used to affect the difficulty. When the right switch is in the A position, Lex Luthor and his gang, along with the kryptonite satellites, move faster than when the switch is in the B position. When the left difficulty switch is in the B position, Lois Lane will show up whenever you get poisoned by kryptonite to give you a healing kiss if you touch her, but in the A position you must find her somewhere in the city. For the controls, you use the joystick to move and fly around. When flying, you can carry objects and people that you set down whenever you land. Holding the button down and moving the joystick activates your X-ray vision, allowing you to see the screens to the left or right or above and below, depending on the direction of your joystick. The game also features a rare early pause feature. You can pause the game by using the select switch and unpause the game by moving your joystick. The goal of Superman is to put all the bad guys, including Lex Luthor, in jail by carrying them to the jail and making them touch the bars, and to rebuild the bridge by placing all three pieces where the bridge originally was. The world of Superman is 21 screens long, and they will wrap around if you continuously travel to the left or right. However, you could take shortcuts by going up or down on a screen, or entering the subway system through several doorways that kind of look like empty versions of the phone booth. You can also enter the subway by entering the Daily Planet, which has a globe above the door that kind of looks like the letter S. Inside the subway, there are four stops you can change between by flying up screens. You can exit the subway by moving down left or right. The criminals cannot hurt you, but the blinking kryptonite satellites can rid you of your ability to fly and carry objects if they touch you. The only cure is a kiss from Lois Lane. There's also a pesky helicopter that acts like the bat from Adventure. It can carry any person, bridge piece, or satellite it comes across. On the top left of the screen are markers representing the criminals still at large. The largest one represents Lex Luthor. On the top right is a timer. Once you rebuild the bridge and send all the crooks to jail, you are supposed to return to the phone booth, turning back into Clark Kent, and go to the Daily Planet. Once you do so, the timer freezes, in a sense serving as your score. The lower the better, and you win the game. Graphically speaking, for an early title, this game looks pretty good, especially Superman and Lois Lane. Sounding music-wise, I like the various sounds, especially Lex Luthor's backpack for some reason, which I can't explain. However, the game can be quite noisy, and some might find it irritating. Family friendly wise, the game would most likely get an E for Everyone rating if released today. Currently at PriceCharring.com, the Atari version of the game has a value of $7 loose, $25 complete, and $71 new. The Sears Telegames version of the game is a bit rarer and more expensive. 
text labels can go for about $20. The Sears picture label is even rarer and can be well over $100. There was even one complete text label copy of the Sears version that sold for over $450. So what did I think of Superman? This was one of my favorite games growing up, but it has lost a little bit with age. The shortcut setup can be confusing and it can be easy to get lost when you first start playing. And once you beat the game, there isn't much else you can do beyond trying to complete the game faster. Some more game variations beyond using the difficulty switches would have been nice. But despite that, the game is still fun. It controls well once you get used to it and does a good job for being an early action adventure game. So where am I going to rank Superman? This one is going in the 60s, right around another enjoyable multi-screen 2600 game, Skateboarding, which is currently at the 67 position. And I do like skateboarding a smidgen more, so Superman is going to be placed right under it. So out of the 200 Atari 2600 games I've now ranked, Superman is entering a phone booth at the 68 position. Superman hasn't aged as well as Adventure, but still offers some fun for an early 2600 title. But that's just my opinion. What do you think? Let me know in the comments below. Also, please like, share, and subscribe. Follow me both on the Facebook and the Twitter. Check out some of my many other videos and sign up at patreon.com slash nosweargamer, just like Ambrosine did, to support the show and gain access to exclusive perks. Thank you for giving me a little part of your day, and I look forward to seeing you next time on the next episode of the Noswear Gamer. Take care, and remember, if you get poisoned by kryptonite, just look for Lois Lane.